the uh, Tozer teaching today is interesting because I don't know if it applies to you, but it certainly does apply to me in a lot of ways because there's always this kind of concept that people have that somehow when you move into ministry that you have either an ego or a super ego or some kind of persona that when you write something and they disagree with it, somehow you're prideful, arrogant, or you're some kind of person that you don't really live up to be. You know, that you're, they want you to be more humble. And if you're too humble, well, you're too much of a doormat. And if you're too much of a doormat, then they want you to be more prideful. So there's always kind of like this criteria that people always want you to measure up to. But you see, in Tozer, what we do is we look at ourselves and we examine ourselves to see where we come from and where we're going and then let God guide us and direct us. It's like I look at myself in the mirror occasionally like when I was cutting my hair and realized I'm not a barber. Wow, I can do all things well but I can't cut my hair that well. And it's kind of obvious. So as much as I have all this ego and pride of my new do somehow it's just like bald <laughs> and not that good a shot oh well I don't react to it it's like okay I went out and bought a hat you know I like my hat it happened to be that when I went out to get the hat I said I need two hats got and you know what I want and I'm looking for them and I just want to have them because I want them and so I don't want to spend, you know, the money that they charge for. I want to spend this amount of money and I want to go. So then I go down to, you know, the mall and, you know, tell my wife, you know, I, I just want hats because I don't want to be conscious one way or the other about having not enough hair, you know, or worried about sunburns or anything else because, you know, I had to even it out by cutting it all off. And so having done that, I said, you know, Lord, I really need those hats, you know, and it's just kind of a practical thing. So, of course, we go down to this mall where we found out that there was, you know, these hats on sale at pennies, you know, really cheap, like $9, you know, and that's what I figured I wanted to spend. Two hats at 9 bucks, 20 bucks. Get done over with, out of there. Because I don't like hats. Well, I used to collect hats, but I don't like baseball caps. So, anyways, haven't had hat collection in years, maybe 20 years now. So, we go down there, and we're heading through the parking lot, and you know, I kind of pull in and I go, oh, no, I'm not pulling in this first one because, man, the place is packed. Of course, it was a Sunday afternoon, I think. And so we pass it. And I'd already told the Lord that I needed you know, the hats. And so we pass the first one. Then we pass the second one. We go down to the third one. We turn in the parking lot there. Then we hang a left. And as I hang a left, I just hang a left and left and left. And there's the parking spot wide open, you know, of all the parking spots that are full. There's one sitting there for me. So I pull in, you know, and I'm going, see, the Lord blesses me. So besides that, we'll go into Sears here, you know, and work our way down to Penny's, where we're going. So I walk into Sears, and guess what? Everything's 50% off. And I look at my wife, and I say, see God? See God. See God run. See God run my life. See God run my life. See God. <laughs> and it's like, you know, see spot, see spot run, you know, beginning readers. Guess what? Hello. My life is always arranged by the Lord. And so... We get in the store and we go looking around and sure enough there's this hat and the other hat that I have. You've seen it, you know, probably on the videos. And sure enough, they're marked 50% off and I get two hats for the price of what one would have been, you know, probably a pennies. So praise the Lord, you know, I thank God that He is the one who has made me who I am. Because what He started with wasn't quite the same person that you see. I was a pretty shy kind of guy, and I was pretty kind of like intimidated by just about everyone around me. So in order to cover that, I had to be sarcastic. I mean, very sarcastic. Sarcastic in such a way that most people today couldn't handle it if I was ever open to the flesh and dealing with that kind of reality, because you can really hurt people. I know my mother used to do it very effectively. And in that, you know, I look at and I realize that Sometimes when we get into ministry, we don't give God enough credit for what he's made us into being. That we should assume the mantle and the responsibilities of who we are in God without 
always playing down the fact that we're nobodies. You know, it's not a false humility for me to say, hey, you know what, I'm a nobody. I, you know, I tell people that on the videos all the time. I'm not creating some kind of false image, you know. No, I'm, you know, I've been married more than once, you know. My wives were, you know, unfortunately, you know, pretty radical in their way, you know, and it devastated me and tore me up, and I was a pretty sensitive kind of guy, so it's kind of like, you know, I had reasons, but guess what? I stayed anyways, you know. I kind of lived through some of those experiences so that God said I could use them to minister to others. So a lot of my experiences in life that I've gone through, you know, I'm not giving pride to my experience. I'm giving recognition to what God has done in allowing me through 35 years of a really rough life, really rough, to demonstrate to others that you can live a life with Jesus no matter what you go into or go through, that God will always take you through by reason of His own death and resurrection and grace and mercy that He wants to extend to us by His love being shed from our hearts to someone else's. So sometimes I admit, you know, when I'm reading Tozer that I fall into that category. You know, I'm not learned as, you know, some people think. I depend upon all of my sustenance, my hats, my monies, you know, because I don't get money from ministry anywhere, from anyone, at any time, in any place, lest by any means that someone would take credit from God for what he has done, because he's raised all this huge ministry up by his own self. Free. 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 Freely receive, freely give. Now, it took a lot of work and still takes a lot of work to find those places I can do those things free, but guess what? That's me. <laughs> he made me this way. <laughs> cheap. <laughs> I'm not frugal. I'm cheap. <laughs> but as long as I can do it free, praise the Lord. I'm going to teach about freedom. You know, not freedom, but free me, you receive and free to give. Let everyone else do their own clickets and trickets, you know, and get all these little, you know, pennies and banners and all that stuff. Not me, man. <laughs> I'm trusting the Lord with all my heart, being not my own understanding, and all my ways acknowledging Him and letting Him direct my path. The worth of the soul God gave His only Son. Of what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, the center of his being, not just the spirit, but his soul, where his attachments lie. In the world's markets, something has no value for a disinterested person, but it may be considered of great value to another person who desires it and buys it. In this sense, we may learn how dear and precious we are to Jesus by what he is willing to give for us. Many Christians are tempted to downgrade themselves too much. I am not arguing against true humility, and my word to you is this. Think as little of yourself as you want to, but always remember that our Lord Jesus Christ thought very highly of you, enough to give himself for you in death and sacrifice. Never let anyone else tear you down. You may tear yourself up a little bit, you know, and get kind of bummed out, whatever. But remember, Jesus died for you. If he didn't die for you alone, as though you were the only person in the world, then he would not have accomplished what he did for the entire world. If he died for one, he died for all. If he didn't die for all, then he didn't die for one. Do you see what it is? All have received the blessings and the benefit of Jesus dying on the cross, as well as personally receiving individually from his own determination of love that he died for you personally. If he didn't die for you personally, he didn't die for all. If he died for all, then he died for you personally. It's just the spiritual dimensionality of reality. <laughs> oh well. If the devil comes to you and whispers that you are no good, don't argue with him. You're right. In fact, you may as well admit it, but then remind the devil, regardless of what you say about me, I must tell you how the Lord feels about me. He tells me I'm so valued to him that he gave himself for me on the cross. He died for me. Jesus died for me. Say that a couple times. Jesus died for me. Sometimes you got to remind yourself, you know, Jesus died for the world, but yes, Jesus died for me. Me. Yeah, me. You know, me. You too. So the value is set by the price paid. And in our case, the price paid was the Lord himself. Man, I must be valuable. Woohoo! And the end that the Savior had in view was that he might redeem us from all iniquity. That is, from the power and consequences of iniquity. Taking away the stain and all the stuff that happened because of our sin. 
taking away everything that you know sure maybe you did something and you blew it and screwed up but eventually he takes it all away maybe in death but still it's all removed one of Wesley's hymns speaks of the double cure for sin the wrath of God against sin is removed and the power of sin in the human life is removed both of these were dealt with when Jesus gave himself for us he redeemed us with a double cure praise the Lord <laughs> the wrath of sin being that God condemning us to hell but the other part of sin I don't know what it said April 4th the wrath of sin the power of sin in the human life meaning that he broke those chains of bondage of addictions now some of you may be saying well I'm glad that Jesus broke the power of addiction but how come I'm still sinning well because you still live in a sinful body and yes it has a certain amount of power over you but you can't overcome it gradually sometimes it takes time some things will last a lifetime I know for me I still got some problems hey God and I we talk you know we walk kind of we relate it you know and go man Lord you know we're gonna get rid of this aren't we <laughs> you know sooner or later you know but some things keep you humble so oh well sinner that we are we're saved by grace so don't play down too much what God has done because in treating yourself less than who you are sometimes you're tearing down what God said of you feels about you and loves you because you see Jesus died for you Bob Bennett wrote a song that said the best thing I can tell you is God loves you I can say that with my heart I know it's the truth the best thing I can tell you is God loves you and he gave his only son as living proof that's how valuable you are Jesus died for you